two people got cramps and they're spreading. <laughs> we were all very hyper about it. And I have to go shower some people. I'll see you later. I wanted to be part of the world, but I didn't see anyone like me in it. I hear about a summer camp for the handicapped run by hippies. Somebody said, you probably will smoke dope with the counselors. And I'm like, sign me up. Have to catch an edit and find yourself. There I was. I was in Woodstock. You wouldn't be picked to be on the team back home, but at Jeanette, you had to go up the back. Even when we were that young, we helped empower each other. It was allowing us to recognize that the status quo is not what it needed to be. The world always wants us dead. We live with that reality. At the time, so many kids just like me were being sent to institutions. It was just a continual struggle. Most disabled people, like myself, are unable to use public transportation. We needed a civil rights law of our own. A rehabilitation program has been vetoed by the president because it was cost prohibitive. We decided we were going to have a demonstration. You get the call to action to the barricades. A small army of the handicapped have occupied this building for the past 11 days. So many people from Camp Jeanette found their way into the building. The FBI cut off the phones. The deaf people went, we know what to do. That's how we communicated to the people outside the building. The Black Panther Party would bring a hot meal. We were like this. We are the strongest political force in this country. We will no longer allow the government to oppress disabled individuals. And I would appreciate it if you would stop shaking your head in agreement when I don't think you understand what we are talking about. What we saw at that camp was that our lives could be better. If you don't demand what you believe in for yourself, you're not going to get it. I said for you like to see um, the handicapped people depicted as people? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, <laughs> we have, I, 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 ha I couldn't sleep last night because I was so excited about this interview because ever since I saw this film, which is the top film to see right now, uh, I've, it, not a day has gone by since I haven't, it hasn't entered my mind. Uh, and we have one of the directors here today, uh, Mr. Jim Lebrecht. And the film is Crip Camp. Thank you for being here, Jim. <laughs> and we Thank have you. Mona here, too. Well, David, I, I uh, thank you for, uh, for inviting both Nicole and I. Nicole and I co-directed and produced the film. Uh, as it is, she's having internet issues and can't get online at the moment. But we didn't want to, you know, have to postpone and change and right. really happy to be here to talk about the film but uh let me just say right up front that first of all this has been the most extraordinary experience of my life yeah. making this film nicole is somebody with 25 years of experience yeah i've been mixing sound for documentaries for over 20 years and uh, i got to know her through mixing three of her feature documentaries but oh. i always want to really kind of, you know, the, we wound up having an incredible collaboration, but that her years of experience and her heart, which is the reason I pitched an idea to her, is the reason that this became a reality. Um, so anyway, I just, I, I, you know, I always want to make sure that everybody is really aware of that. You know, well, I mean, the two fantastic of you- Fantastic collaboration. It, it, and it, it showed it to have the both of you there. When I saw that both of you directed it and it was such a, uh, such a perfect flow to it. I mean, right away I was sucked into it. I felt like I became part of the family. It reminded of me when I went to camp and then it took me on a whole new, um, a whole new journey. And it, 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 that, this is a question too about how did, did you set, set to make a film about the camp and did the story change uh, along the way or did you have it all pre-planned and set out from the beginning? 
Well, I think there was a lot of discovery along the way. And initially, Nicole and I had had lunch together as she was wrapping up her last feature doc, which was uh, The Revolutionary Optimist. And I had been becoming more and more kind of riled in my work that I wanted to see, you know, I, I see how incredibly powerful documentary film it is, but that although there have been films around the disability experience, um, there wasn't one that I felt really gave people a, a really an inside look. Right. That And that our goal was to see if we could reframe what it meant to be disabled, both for people with disabilities or chronic illnesses, or or those that are outside the community. Right. Um, and so, really, after that lunch, I just kind of I had talked to her about different subjects, but I kind of offhandedly said, you know, I've always wanted to see a documentary about my summer camp. That I thought there was a really important story of this exodus of people from the New York area. Yeah, out to uh, out to Berkeley, as a fly or a moth gets on my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. I have those wonderful, you know. I'm not around. hallucinating like people did back in the '60s. I that was <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and you know, Nicole. At first, um, well, let me just say that you know, at first she kind of told me later actually in one of the interviews that she actually had like an internal eye roll. It was kind of like, oh yeah, everybody thinks their summer camp is special. So, but it doesn't necessarily mean a film, but I, I showed her the Facebook page from Camp Jeanette yeah. that people have been putting photographs in for years. And there you see all these people having a great time. And I talked to her and I said, yeah, I heard I could smoke dope with the counselors. That's why I went to that camp. <laughs> and as, as we both started, Dating of the story, um, we called Judy human really early on. And she, and because we had this theory that the camp had something to do with the disabled civil rights movement, but, you know, didn't, you know, did, did we have that correct? And Judy said, absolutely. Right. So, um, you know, you start out with all of these different grants, you fundraising, you know, proposals to get money to make your film. And so you have to give them kind of an, a, a script of how you think it's gonna play out. And before we were able to f find out that this black and white footage from the camp still existed, we were talking about things like doing recreations uh, at the camp, hiring actors and crew members with disabilities to, you know, and, and to try to find a, a good location to do this. Right. But I did remember that this group of hippie videographers with this new technology had showed up at camp. Yeah. And that in fact, they had uh, put the, the big bulky tape deck, they had strapped it to the handlebars of my wheelchair, and I held a camera as somebody else was pushing me around camp so I could do a tour of the camp. And at that point, Nicole's going, oh my God, if that existed, you know, that's gonna be powerful. Right. And. Um, after I remember the word people was involved in their name and that there had been some kind of video they had made that was on Manhattan Cable back in the 70s about the crab epidemic at Camp Jeanette for the handicap, yeah. which, you know, back in mid-1970s, my dad would call me while I was in college and say, oh, your crab documentary's on again. And, you know, <laughs> so long story well, long story, a little shorter, uh, Nicole was really just like a dog in a bone, just really trying to figure out how we could find these people. Right. Eventually, she came across a digitized kind of video freak magazine, you know, these new videographers that somebody had finally posted online. Yeah. And there was an ad in the back selling this tape about the crabs. So we knew it was the People's Video Theater. She did some hunting around. We had some names to work with. And she tracked down one of them, Howard Gutstadt, as being a board member at a uh, anarchist bookstore in San Francisco. But of, of course, right? I mean, yeah. And um, they wouldn't give, um, they wouldn't give her his contact, but they left a note for him. And right. a month later, we're in the editing, you know, our office or editing room, and we get it. 
text from Howard that indeed the tapes exist. They had gotten a grant to get them transferred uh, from the original half inch video. Right. Um, but they only had money for about three out of their 10 reels, but that they had started the process. Howard lived in San Francisco. We're up in Berkeley and Oakland yeah. and that they're doing all of this restoration work in San Francisco at a place called the Bay Area Video Coalition. We had, we set up a lunch. It yeah. was actually quite emotional because here we are at that time, 45 years later. Right. Proposing that we take the work that they had done so many years ago yeah. with this whole idea of taking this new technology to marginalized communities and letting them use it as a tool. And we were saying, we think that we can use your, your film, your, your video in our film. Yeah. And we saw a couple of the reels and it was astonishing. Wow. And eventually we got all five and a half hours of video on a hard drive and it was like, how many hours? Five and a half hours of their material just at the summer camp. And, uh, you know, it was really bittersweet. I mean, just, you know, you're looking back at time and, oh my God, there I am at 15. And, and such beautifully filmed. That's great. And to see you, to see you hear your voice and then to see you as a, a younger, what, 14 year old, you said? 15. For, yeah, 15. So it, it was amazing. It took us on the journey. It, um, but now how do you, I mean, was it, how, how long was it before you realized you had these tapes from when you wanted to do it? Um, we were able to locate them about, we, we kind of said basically we were done for about five years and that it was, you know, very early in, in, um, uh, you know, 2016. Uh, right. Yeah, I think, yeah. So, or just before that. And so it was a few, a, a couple of months into it before we knew that they were there, that those films were there. Right. In the meantime, we also, uh, a lot of the black and white stills you see in the film, uh, Shelley Coy, one of the counselors, had that stuff at his, at his place. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of, uh, eight millimeter that we shot in color to try to use as a promo for supporting the camp. So, I mean, my God, you know, we have over well over, you know, probably close to 200 slides to choose from. You found a treasure. That was, yeah. And, but as, um, as some, we went to Sundance uh, a few years ago as kind of in a cohort of, you know, filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And this guy uh, kind of says, oh, my God, you've got this luscious loaf, you know, of, of this black and white video. And it was just, uh, you know, it just, it truly, truly was. It's such, uh, it's truly a stunning piece. I, I, and some people, I know I talked to some people, not about this film, but the word inspiring. They got, some people like it, some people don't. But... Uh, uh, one of the assignments that we gave to Performing Arts Studio West and Meet the Biz was to watch the film. Actually, after I saw it, I said, oh my God, I have to put this out there. So I sent it to our hundred and so students. Okay, your assignment is to watch Crip Camp and then write a review. Uh, it could be a sentence. It could be a paragraph, a page, whatever you want. And write about uh, how it made you feel how you can relate to it, and anything else you want to say. Uh, so we got some of those as well. In fact, uh, and in, in a little, in a couple of minutes here, we'll, we'll have a few other people coming on, a few of the students. But um, some of the thoughts were Mark Pulver said, I loved how it encouraged others with disabilities uh, and telling them to live their life to the fullest. Uh, he said, we are all gifted in one way or the other, and thank you for this opportunity through your film. Yeah. Uh, we also, Tracy Turner said, it's inspiring, resilient and brave warriors. And I love how it showed how people with disabilities were sexual. Um, and then Lonza Rod Record said, they sang together and held hands. The movie was eye-opening. So what you have done, what 
you have all done, what you, Nicole, is really brought a lot of love and acceptance and eyes wide open to everyone and love to the community. Corbett O'Toole, um, who's in the film, mentioned one day, uh, a few days before, uh, during Sundance, mm. and she felt like Crip Camp was the love letter to the disabled community. Wow. And to me, that just about, I mean, I basically cried at the drop of a hat anyway, but it was, it was a lovely, um, lovely sentiment. It, and, sh uh, it shows by listening to you and, and knowing you from the times that I've met you, you have this heart uh, which goes into your work and it shows. And, and um, yeah, I get emotional too. <laughs> we would be crying together if we hung well, out. Well, look, you know, I think the thing about the film is that for a lot of people, I mean, I, I'm trying to be humble here, okay? But I also, Nicole and I have gotten a lot of feedback. And this is, a, seems to be, for a lot of people, the film that the disabled communities wanted to see. Yeah. That I, we're getting comments from people like, for the first time in my life, I now feel knowable. Knowable. I mean, and that, you know, and showing us as sexual beings. And, you know, I was, you know, and typical teenagers and young adults. Yeah. And so it's, I, I just, you know, I, it, it, I, I'm almost going off the rails here just because, you know, the amount of messages I've been getting and we've been getting on everywhere from Twitter to Facebook um, and emails has just been I bet. So, so just so overwhelmingly supportive and, and lovely. It's been great. Well, and I'm sure you'll continue to get more. I will send you the reviews too if you want. Um, uh, yeah, well, I'm sure we'd love to see it. Just to get the, the thoughts of what everybody said and just people loved it. Um, and going back to the inspiring, it inspired me because I feel connected because my I feel my extended family is here. As well as it inspired me in the way because I've been working on a documentary for over 10 years and sometimes I just go, oh, with all this, you know, the bumps in the road, the money and this and that, the stories change and all, all that. And after seeing it, something of a flame lit inside of me again saying, don't take it, take it step by step. When it's meant to happen, it's meant to happen. Hey, look, you know, we would have loved to have, you know, had the film finished in time for the midterm elections. We would have loved to have had it out earlier than it than it was, um, but every film has got its its timetable, and we were very very fortunate that um, we had raised a, a fair amount of money that allowed us to work with our editors for about a year and a half, wow. and that's not, not the usual case. But you know, David, I've been a sound mixer on do, a one wonderful documentary. And it did take that filmmaker 10 years to make her film. And it's just a wonderful film. It just, it's, it's this balance of the time it takes and the fact that, you know, money, money ain't cheap. Yeah. <laughs> and not to rush it out there either. If you feel it's not what you really truly want. Right. And also with the collaboration, you need the collaboration as, as I saw in some of your interviews but at the same time, you don't want to just push it out there. No, you don't. I mean, I think we had lofty ideas that we would have been done maybe by 2018 at one point. But Got it. <laughs> I, look, I look at the postcards we printed up coming in 2018, and it's like, <laughs> oh my God. What were, what were we thinking? thinking. Um, but look, we had, first off, that the fact that um, we um, we got the eye of Netflix, yeah. and that through a bunch of wonderful, um, we got to be part of the Obamas. I know I was higher wondering. ground production. How did that happen? 
Oh my God. Um, well, we, uh, we have a wonderful executive producer, this guy, Howard Girdler, who um, uh, produced uh, How to Survive a Plague, which is a really extraordinary documentary. And, um, and Howard had kind of read about the higher ground starting the Obama's a production company with Netflix. And he kind of reached out and they said, you know, we're really early, we're not taking projects. But we had a sales agent that we brought on and um, they got our trailer. We had made a trailer, uh, about a seven, eight minute trailer. And that they got that to Priya Swaminathan, who's uh, one of the principals at Higher Ground. And she got back a hold of us and said, look, I don't know what you guys have done here, but I watched it twice and I can't stop thinking about it. And so she wound up coming up to Berkeley and spending the day with Nicole and I in the editing room. Nice. Showed her a lot of this footage. We got to know each other. Um, and it was kind of like a first date of just saying, you know, higher ground, we really want to roll up, you know, be, you know, active partners on this. and. And it's like, yeah, because, you know, Priya, you know, we've done our homework. We know about you and Tonya, uh, uh, who are both kind of the princes of higher ground. And it was um, amazing. So, and in fact, um, when she left the meeting with us, uh, she, she called us about 15 later, minutes later from the parking lot and says, um, look, um, we want to work with you. And the president and Mrs. Obama feel the same way. Uh, and so we are the second documentary to come out, but um, the first one, American Factory, they had purchased it at Sundance. So we were the first one in which they were really, we were in the middle of still shooting right. and editing when they came on. And it was a fantastic experience. Wow. You know, and, um, you know, the Obamas looked at some of the cuts and, Kind of we got some notes back through Priya and, you know, they were, you know, and, um, you know, asking just questions about things like how, you know, how do the campers afford to go there, were there scholarships and other structural things, but it's a, it was a great working relationship. I love that. I mean, really, you know, we, and, and we, you go through a process where you've got deadlines for certain cuts and, trying to get it down to length and such. And everybody at Netflix and everybody at Higher Ground, they were all wonderful. They were, you know, all the notes were worth considering. Yeah. You don't take all the notes. You try to explain why you didn't uh, because of, you know, you respect, you know, right. everybody who's been involved. But, and let me mention one thing. Yeah. I feel like I'm on a, on a roll here. Yeah. The accessibility of Crip Camp on Netflix is greater than anything they've done in the past. It's, it's uh, captured in more languages than they've ever done before. It's audio described in many more languages than they've ever done before. Yeah. And we were also in contact with Haben uh, uh, Grima, and who's you know, a very well-known deafblind activist and um, she says, it, you know, is there going to be a script? And so that I can, I can experience the film. Right. And we got, we, and we basically talked to Netflix about it. They said, what a great idea. And we had a little bit of back and forth between, they basically, you know, consulted with her a little bit about it. And they came up with a 161 page script that reads almost like, you know, a narrative of the whole film. Yeah. And she said, quote, this is the first time I've ever been able to watch a movie on Netflix. Ah. Uh, and so I... Talk about changing, changing attitudes, opening doors. This, this film is like blasting the doors open. Yeah. And so anybody who wants to get that script, if you go to the Netflix website for Crip Camp, there's an area that's called, there's a menu for details, and you click on that and you can find the script. There, download it, and what she then does is, she's got the technology that loads it in so she can read it on, she's got a braille reader um, 
so she can read it. And it's like, yeah, we, you know, you have to get in the door yeah. to be able to advocate for these things. And, and by virtue of this film, we've been able to work with Netflix to really um, help them see what total accessibility can be and what it takes. And they have been gun-ho from the beginning. Mm. You know, there's never been any, well, I, none of that. It's like, this is awesome. We're excited. We love your film. So I can't say, you know, every company, especially a company like that, you know, you could say, well, what about this? And what about that show or whatever? Our experience has been very positive and we feel like we've opened a lot of minds. Yeah, you have. You have. I, I, I mean, the film... The film to me, it's, it's, and other people have mentioned this too, about looking out for each other, uh, coming together to make it a better place. And one thing that, and, and, and like we discussed too, it's, it just seems like it's coming out at the right time right now. Um, it just seemed like that to me. Um, we do, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're saying, you know, we're making a lot of must-see during quarantine lists you know and it's like you know the best documentaries on netflix and well, i saw the first uh, there was an article the first one was your film the new york times <laughs> get out of town unbelievable huh my god and it shows it shows persistence and going after it and you might come up against those boulders and mountains in the road but you just keep on going and then and you find gold along the way, and and then you have trip camp. You can't predict how your life is going to pan out. Yeah. I mean, you, you can set goals, and it's good to set goals, and to try to put yourself in front of opportunities, but uh, uh, I'll never experience anything like this in my life again. Well, well you'll, you'll have another experience. Maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have we have uh, a couple of our students coming on, which I'm going to um, see. We have uh, I'll, I'll announce them when they arrive. Let's see, uh, Zuli Johnson. There's Zuli Johnson. <laughs> Zuli Johnson. Hi, hi. And then there's Blair Webb. Oh, wonderful uh, family from Performing Arts Studio West. Um, uh, uh, Zuli is right next to. Um, Mona Jean, and below Mona Jean is Blair Webb uh, in the picture. So well, we, each of you have uh, have a question uh, for the one of the directors who is here today, Jim Lebrecht. Uh, how about you, Zuli? What any thoughts or questions? Yes, I just want to know what's the intuition making this film. Um. um Crip camp. What's the uh it, it, uh inspiration? Oh the 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 inspiration for making it? Yes. Um I really um Hi. It, the inspiration was to try to tell a story about our community. And that um that you know I, I I've been working in film for many, many years and had really seen the power of documentary film. And fortunately, I became friends with Nicole Noonan, who's the co-director of the film, and asked her if she might want to make a film about the summer camp, because I thought it was an interesting story there. And she said, well, why don't we make it together? Um, but it was this whole idea that there's a story. The initial real nugget for me was these people moving from the New York area out to Berkeley and why did they do that? And, and that I knew that there was a story here that shouldn't be lost to history. What I didn't realize, or we didn't realize, was how big the story could go so far beyond um, uh, the summer camp. Wonderful. Thank you. It's truly amazing. Uh, and this is Blair Webb. Blair, what, what question or thoughts do you have for Jim? Hello, um, Crim Camp is a revolution. 
What advice would you give to people with disabilities who are interested in disability justice and want to tell their stories like you did? Um, that's a great question. I mean, it's a really important question to ask because um, I, I've always found that you have to kind of find, try to find people who are doing those things that you want to be doing and to try to work with them um, and that we all start out not having any experience and we find our different ways to gain it. I, you know, I had a long kind of career starting off in theater and moving into film and such, but that um, you're not the only one out there that wants to do this, and which doesn't mean that there is a room for you. What that means is there's collaborators out there. And the more that we kind of come together as a team of people to do different aspects of the job, the more we learn from each other. And, you know, it, it, it's, yeah, I, I, I just, I, that's like almost like the universal answer to just about any question is to find your community. So I would encourage you to do that. And in fact, the matter is nowadays, especially with the, uh, the shelter in place, that we've been dealing with, people making meaningful work doesn't have to be a million dollar project. It could be shot on your phone. It could be edited in your computer. It can go up on YouTube. And that we, certainly all of the technology is more affordable than it has been in the, traditionally, especially when I was much younger, that it's possible to do produce things. And the fact of the matter is your first one will probably not be as good as your second or third one, but you just practice at this and you, you do it. You know, I think of myself originally as a sound designer, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that I, you know, I just needed to earn my chops. So that's my recommendation. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. What, uh, uh, I loved your questions. Thank you, Zuli, thank you, Blair. Uh, thank you, Mona, Mo, Mona Jean, for interpreting today. Um, and thank you so much to, to you, Jim, and, and please send love to Nicole. I know she wanted to be here today and hopefully she'll come join us in the future and maybe you'll come back as well. Um, it's just been a, I mean, again, your film, I want to buy the poster and put it on my wall. I love it so much. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll have one of those some days for people. And, uh, you know, there is the website for our film. Yes. And it's uh, www.cryptcamp.com. And there's a way to sign up for newsletters. And also we're, we started kind of a virtual summer camp. And, uh, and so uh, every Sunday for 16 weeks, there's going to be different topics and uh, webinars and, we had our first one yesterday, and uh, anyway, I, I know I see a smile on Blair's face. You wouldn't happen to have checked that out yesterday. Uh, 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 yeah, I actually had written a second question, and you had mentioned this amazing idea for a virtual camp experience, experience this summer. Who came up with this and how? Um, well, um, we, um, we've always been planning a really very big impact campaign for the film. And I've uh, been fundraising for that for a couple of years alongside finishing the film itself. And our campaign is run by two amazing women, uh, Andrea Levant and Stacey Park. They're both deeply rooted in the disability justice movement. And... Um, and they, I mean, oh my God, they've come up with amazing ideas and 
taken our initial plans and kind of gone, well, we don't need this anymore. Uh, but here, here's a no whole other group of ideas that are like, right. and so they're fantastic. They yeah. came up with this whole thing. And um, it's been just, I have to actually have goosebumps right there. <laughs> this is really exciting. Anyway, go to the website, sign yeah. up for this and, and, and get on our mailing list. And, you know, as things go on in the next number of months, hopefully we'll even have some merch. So, uh, so. I'm, I've, it, and this is open. They go to your website and you could sign up for the, uh, the seminar. Yeah. yeah. I, love it. Oh, oh. I have. Oh, wonderful. I'm gonna Great. Oh, good, good, good. That's great. Well, Thanks. we had about 1,800 people on yesterday. Uh, 1,800? I love yeah. it. That's a good number, you know. Yes, it is, isn't it? All right. All right. Thank you. Right. Okay, folks. Bye. Take care. Bye. I am. I am. <laughs> I am.